you know, on the way out, I got very lost looking for my car. I wandered around for about 15 minutes looking for it. This time we're gonna take note, level four C, I guess, four C. Remember, four C. San Manuel Casino near San Bernardino, California. Some of you might remember this uh, casino from such episodes as, I don't know, I don't remember the name of the episode or the number, but we've been here before. And uh, question number two is why are we here again? Well, needed to get out of the desert. And this casino is kind of the closest one uh, in like the LA area, I think. Maybe Palm Springs is uh, somewhat same distance, but Needed to get out of the desert and uh, couldn't really decide where to go. So just got in the car and started driving, booked a hotel uh, nearby, near here, and uh, here we are. They have two 510 games running, so that's good. So I'm gonna hop in there, it's a $1,500 max. I was a little bit indecisive about uh, where I wanted to go. I, wanted, I really wanna get to the East Coast, I wanna get to Florida, I wanna get to the Pacific Northwest, I wanna get to Oklahoma. There's so many places, um, but you know when you're indecisive i feel like you just gotta just start just start doing something so i just got in the car and got out of the desert like i said it's the slowest time of the year uh, for poker in las vegas so anywhere anywhere outside of vegas is good here we are all right gonna hop in the game in for 1500 the usual drill let's go All right, so poker's underway here. Three limps in this hand. I looked down at ace 10 off suit on the button. I'm gonna try and punish these limpers. So I raise it up to $65. Only the hijack calls. So heads up to a flop. Ace, eight, three with two clubs. He checked it to me and pretty borderline, I think, here with ace 10. I think a bet is certainly fine, but uh, I decided to pot control here because this is one of the worst aces that I would uh, be isoing here, I think. Uh, on the button versus three limpers. So I decided to check it back. Turns to nine of hearts, which brings a second flush draw on board. He checks it over to me again, so I feel like with all these draws on board and available, and him checking twice on such a wet board, pretty sure I have the best hand here. So I go ahead and put out a bet, bet $110. Interesting news is that he puts in a check raise. He raises $250. He's only got about $215 behind. So it's a really awkward situation. So many draws available uh, on the on the board now, and like I said, I feel like he would bet here with pretty good hands, just uh, the board being so wet. So with that in mind, I decided to make a call. Looking back, I'm not too sure about this uh, this call here because since he's so short, and I'm probably not going to fold on a uh, river brick or pretty much any any river. It's going to be tough for me to fold on pretty much any river. So I feel like I should be just getting it in here on the on the turn. Anyway, I make the call and we see a jack of hearts on the river. Not my favorite river, but we do have the 10 of hearts, so we block flushes and straights. Seems like a fairly key card. He sticks his 215 in there, and I think about it a little bit, but it's so cheap now, and I pretty much made up my mind on the turn anyway, so I call it off, and unfortunately he rolls over pocket threes for a flop set. So I guess he played it pretty well. Uh, he got me to give him the maximum, uh, got me to bet the turn, and not only that, but call a check raise. Not really uh, enthusiastic about the way that I played this hand. So in this hand, I open up King Jack off suit to $30. Both blinds calls. Three ways, two a flop this time. 10-7-3 with two diamonds and one club. They check it to me, I just decide to check it back see what happens on the turn here. Turn seems like a good card. Make top pair on a jack of clubs. Once again, brings it back to our flush draw. Two flush draws on board. They check it over to me. And even though uh, it feels like my range is a little bit capped here because I would very likely bet 9-8 on this flop, I'm just gonna bet it anyway. Uh, hope I don't get put in too tough of a spot here. 
if I do, I'll have to uh, make some sort of a decision if, uh, if I get check raised. But I'm going to make a bet anyway. I bet $60. Only the big line calls this time. So heads up to a river card. Five of clubs. Third club on board. She checks it over to me. And I feel like most players in straightforward games, they tend to lead out when they make their hands. So I feel like I probably still have the best hands here. So I go ahead and put in a value bet. I'll make it 110 Big blinds, things for a little bit, and then makes the call. I show, and it's good. So we're gonna take this one down. All right, next spot here. Open up pocket tens from under the gun plus one. Only the small blind calls this time. So we're seeing a heads up flop of seven, six, three. Small blind checks it over to me. I think I make a fairly standard C bet here at $35. Small blind calls. Turn is a nine, and small blind checks it over to me. I think a, I think a bet is certainly reasonable here, um, but the board is fairly connected, and I don't want to get to put in too tough of a spot uh, once again. So being in position with an overpair and not wanting to uh, be forced to call down some big bets if I do get put in a spot, I just decided to check it back. A little bit of pot control. River's a good card though. River's an eight, so we make it straight. Not only that, but the small blind leads out for $110. Definitely not fearing uh, a jack-10 type hand in this spot with this run out and having two tens in my hand. So it seems like a pretty obvious spot to go for some value. I put in a raise and make it $325. She calls pretty quickly. So I roll my hand over and uh, we're scooping. Next interesting hand here, another good looking hand from early position. This time we find Pocket Kings from Under the Gun Plus One. Raise it up to $30 again. There's a middle position call and the blinds call. So four ways to a flop this time. Seven, six, four with two spades. The blinds check it over to me and I think if we were heads up, I might entertain a check back here, but I just don't want to give any free cards. So there's so many hands that I can get value from, so many draws. I want to try and thin the field a little bit if, if possible. So I bet $70, only the small blind calls. Turn is a nine of spades, so not exactly my favorite card, but we do have the king of spades for some potential uh, backdoor possibilities here. Small blind checks it over to me, and I think I'm just happy to check back here and see what develops on the river. So that's what I do, I check it back. The river's an offsuit king, so we end up with top set on this board. The small blind leads out for $130. I think with top set, pocket kings, too good. We do have the king of spades, it eliminates some flush possibilities. We beat everything except for flush and the odd straight here on the, in this spot. So having top set, having a, the king of spades, and being well aware of the fact that folding is boring, I'm gonna toss in the call here. Small blind rolls over, ace deuce with the ace of spades. So, we're gonna win this one. Uh, top set, top set coming through. Would have been interesting. Uh, Would have been a little bit tougher of a spot if we don't river the top set and the bet size a little bit bigger. But I think with the uh, the bet size there and the holding, pretty straightforward call there on the river. All right, in this hand, the under the gun plus two player limps in. Fair amount of limping going on in this game. Lots of open limping, uh, definitely more so than like uh, the 510 at the Bellagio, for example. The cutoff makes it $35. And it's down at pocket fives in the big blinds. Getting a pretty good price here, having a pair. Happy to make the call here, and the limper calls as well. So three ways to a flop, 973 rainbow. We check it over to the initial razor. Puts out a C bet, $65. Tough to improve with this hand here. I, very, I could very well have the best hand here, and that's definitely gonna be the case some percentage of the time, but it's tough to improve with uh, an under pair to the board. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let it go, especially with the player behind me. That player also folds. We don't get to see uh, any showdowns in this hand, but I know how much you guys like your nothing this hands. So there you have it. All right guys, fast forward to about 10 to five in the morning here. A little bit before 5 a.m. There's one limp. We look down at pocket aces. Pocket aces at five in the morning. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? So we're gonna raise it up here. We make it $40 to go. Big line and the limper call. So three ways to a flop. 
10, 9, 4, rainbow. Action checks to me and I go ahead and bet $80. Big line calls and the limper pulls. Heads up to a turn card, which is a five. Pretty safe card. Big line checks to me. Gonna keep firing here. This time I bet 170. It's only got about $350 left though. So not too much action left to be uh, had here in this hand either way, no matter what he decides. Turns out his decision is to jam all in. So obviously snap call, river, offsuit queen. He rolls over king 10. So pocket aces come through uh, just in time here. Wrap up somewhat long of a session. Take this down, always good when pocket aces hold up at 5 a.m. $2,000. We added on an additional $500 when uh, things went not so great right off the bat. But things turned around pretty quick after that. We made a bunch of hands. In for $2,000, out for $3,860. That's a profit of $1,860 according to my math. Currently about 5.30 a.m. I have to check out of my hotel between six and seven hours from now. I only got it for one night because it was somewhere around $85 to, for the one night, for tonight. For tomorrow, it's like $260. So, we're gonna be moving on. The question is, where are we going? And I don't have an answer at the moment. I really don't know. Everywhere around Los Angeles is obviously pretty expensive, particularly on the weekends. So I'm thinking I'll probably stay like out in the periphery, if that word is applicable in this instance. Uh, so like, you know, maybe out here like Palm Springs or uh, maybe somewhere that I haven't been to yet. At this point, it's still a mystery even to me. Speaking of mysteries, so I got the drone back from the repair shop looks brand spanking new. I go to fly the thing off the roof of the parking structure at my hotel. It takes off perfectly fine, but then, instead of just hovering in place like it's supposed to do, this thing just starts meandering away and not slowly. Do you know how terrifying that is? Thankfully, I wasn't flying it over anybody or any cars or anything. I was basically flying it over a big empty parking lot. Uh, I did manage to get it back into my possession safe and sound. But I'm a little terrified to uh, fly it again. Not having it, not having control over the drone while you're flying it. I mean, this is the stuff nightmares are made of. Yeah. 